to go, stunning Missouri in the opening day of the tournament. So this is a conference that actually has a record of winning games in the NCAA tournament. Not winning more than they lose, mind you, but Coppin State was another team as a 15 seed that won against the number two. We're ready to go. Randy Heimerman, Jeff Campbell, Casey Eli are the men in stripes. And North Carolina Central with that guard-dominated attack has the ball to open the game. And you talk about the MEAC. This is a team that really hasn't made a face in that conference. They had their best season last year. They were 15-1 and one in the conference. Fell short in, the, in their conference tournament. But, but this is a program starting to find some identity. And you're right, Bruce. This is a very, very guard-oriented team. They play a lot of guys, a lot of minutes. They'll go seven deep. Sometimes they'll push that to eight. Look them to run very good man-to-man -man defense. They're going to switch it up a lot. There's a guy struggling from three. Hit a couple last game. You get him started early. Watch out. Coming off a 26-point game at Alabama. A new season high for Clee Anthony early. Coming in, hitting just 29% from beyond the arc. But he opens with a shocker three. And then right back the other way, that's Karama Tawara, 6'1 freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan, knocking it down and tying the game. The big shot. He's only knocked down three on the season. That's his fourth. It's his tip to tip from behind the arc. But the big fella can step back and shoot it. Nice play, rolling it in by Darius Carter, who is in the lineup tonight. Carter will shoot two. Darius Carter has really made some nice strives, Craig. He's averaging 6.8 points and 5.2 rebounds in 17 minutes. But he's coming off a 9.7 rebound effort in the game against Alabama as he knocks that through. And over his last three games, he's averaging 10.6 points and 9 rebounds. He has been active. Well, I think between him, LaFille, and Colby, he's been the guy that stepped up. He's 11-19 shooting from the field over those last three games. You talked about Bruce. Uh, coming in in the night, he's eight for eight from the free throw line over those three games. Then get the ball, but he's playing a lot of minutes. Twenty-seven minutes he's averaging over the last two games. So Coach Marshall is starting to get a lot of confidence in him. You know, a few times in the last couple games he's played with his back to the basket, he's been able to score with his back to back. Now he can step out and shoot the 15 footer. I think he's got really nice touch with that. But a big fella down low, getting him touches, more touches, is just going to get more confidence in the paint. Unforced error for the visitors from Durham, North Carolina. They only average 13 a game. Dale Cotton working down low, draws the double team. Skirts pressure, Baker to Van Vliet. Good ball movement. They're trying to go low to Darius Carter. Clay Anthony early for three. That was a good-looking shot. Cotton tipped it away, and last touch by Takeo Cotton. And that's just some of the half-court defense you're going to see from NC Central. Right there, they went into a box and won. They're focusing on Clay Anthony early. He's the guy that they're going to try to contain. But this is a very athletic team, a talented athletes that will change their defenses every possession. Jay Copeland out front. Chapman to the corner. Ingram, looping shot. Clay Anthony early with his first pull. Ingram has been well covered with each of his two offerings. He's 0 for 2 to start the game. And that's what Ingram wants to do. He wants to put the basketball on the floor. He's been to the free throw line 102 times, averages 11 attempts a game. If that doesn't sound like a lot or might sound like a lot, Clay Anthony Early has been to the line 53 times. So he's almost doubled getting to the free throw line. Puts it on the floor, puts his head down. But you have to be aware, he's a guy that can't step back and knock down the triple. Alfonso Houston for 3. Beyond three break, all the way to the bucket, and Darius Carter is fouled on his way. Randy Heimerman with the whistle, and the foul goes against Emmanuel Chapman. Second team foul on the visitors, who came in on separate flights and didn't get in until late this afternoon. They had some real travel issues with the weather on commercial airlines. Well, they just got in a few hours ago. Right. Ha the coaching staff, they don't even have their suits th that they're wearing. Uh, at one point, they thought they were going to have to wear the Shockers black jerseys to play this game. They didn't know what luggage they were going to get. <laughs> Trials and tribulations of the team trying to travel this time of year. And they've had a rough year on the road. This team went to, 
IUPUI and got the loss, but they had travel uh, problems there. They got into weather there. The bus driver, uh, the head coach was saying they were driving 10 miles an hour to get to the game. They ride to the game 30 minutes for game time. This is a team that has not had any success weather-wise on the road. Three and two coming in on the road. Craig talked about playing NC State. Also Old Dominion. When they get down here next week, they play Marturgeon squad at Maryland. They got to the line 45 times with NC State. Made 41 of them. Last touch by NC Central. Yeah, you talked about Ingram. In doing prep for this game, his numbers are just off the chart. Talk about a guy that will put it on the floor and will go challenge you at the basket. You're going to see him tonight. And Jeremy Ingram, 6'3", senior out of Charlotte. He uses both hands really well. Very good in the open court. Can finish with the left and the right. Ron Baker off the turnover. And hustling to get it back and does. Two on two break. Van Vliet stops. Good ball fake. Clean Anthony Uri all the way in and he'll shoot two. Love the big fella at 6'8 on the baseline showing the ball and then putting it on the floor going strong to the rim. And it starts with the point guard. Great patience by Van Fleet. Of letting his guys get in. He didn't have anything initially, but by slowing the dribble down a little bit, was able to find early, and then the ability to use a shot fake at six eight, and then go up. They've got a foul. He has been busy in this ball game. He's coming off of a game where he went eleven of eleven from the free throw line. Didn't even get to the charity stripe the game before but was uh, money from the line. That's five of the Shockers, eight points. Wichita State up by five. Houston with it, leaves it off. That's Ingram working against who else but Phil Cotton. Cotton has had the better of that match up to this point. Three ball on the way, quick catch and shoot. And a good job by Clay Anthony Early and Fred Van Vliet. Early. All sorts of attention. And he dragged his foot. Timeout on the floor. Shockers up five. A fairly quick start. As they look for their 12th in a row. Back to the roundhouse. Check it out. In 1990.